in that regard, I should like to make some concluding remarks, Mr. President. First, I should like uh, to reassure my distinguished colleague, the Deputy Permanent Representative of Egypt, and all uh, other members of the League of Arab States, that the Arab the Trojan horse has been unmasked today for the co-sponsors of the uh, draft resolution in the West, they have used the League of Arab States as a bridge, paving the way to internationalizing the situation in Syria and taking the Syria file to the Security Council once more. This was the role required of the League of Arab States. So I would say to you, that role comes to an end today. The League of Arab States has been depleted in this regrettable role. Furthermore, the League of Arab States has been kidnapped by the Gulf Cooperation Council countries. Syria has left the League of Arab States, albeit temporarily. It is a league that is broken within. It is broken both politically and morally. Three. Following its plot against us uh, today, good luck to the Arab League in implementing the tasks entrusted uh, to it by Israel. Congratulations for this new alliance between the League of Arab States and Israel and the historical enemies of Syria. Syria has always defended all Arabs, expecting no return. Today, we do not wish them to stand by us. Following this shameful position in the international community, all we want from them today, now that the uh, Arab League Trojan horse has been unmasked, all we want them is to save whatever face they have left and cease and desist in this uh, plotting against Egypt itself, against Libya, Sudan, Algeria, Yemen. Maybe more to come. The wealth of all the Gulf Cooperation Council will be squandered on losing causes. That price will be borne by all the Arabs. All the Arabs will be used as fuel to obtain the objectives of the West and Israel. As I've said, Mr. President, The issue is the settlement of political accounts with Syria, with Syria's regional role, with Syria's Arab role, with uh, Syria's alliances in service of Arab and Islamic causes. Had there been the very minimum of credibility among some colleagues co-sponsoring the draft resolution, they would have accepted the Russian amendments. They would have encouraged the uh, national dialogue. They would have 
ceased providing weapons as well as media and political cover to the armed groups. Finally, Mr. President, it is also truly regrettable that the United Nations, entrusted primarily with maintaining international peace and security, with enshrining the purposes of the Charter, well, the United Nations, for a while now, has acted in sending erroneous messages on the possibility of violating the sovereignty of states, on the possibility of militarily invading member states, of the possibility and viability of political pressure being put to bear against member states to change their policies. If things continue in this manner, Mr. President, the United Nations will collapse morally first and entirely second, politically, and we would have destroyed a large body of normative efforts for the past 66 years. This will be the final result. This will be what will be reaped by those who sow the seeds of intervention in the internal affairs of others. Thank you, Mr. President. The representative of the Syrian Arab Republic has been our last speaker. The General Assembly has thus concluded this stage of its consideration of Agenda Item 34. The meeting is adjourned. Which they did they took it and they did nothing about it. What about the United States? They can help. <laughs> who take help from anyone, Israel, we, we don't, we don't care. I said, well, did they find some information collect connecting Saddam to al-Qaeda? He said, no, no. He says, there's nothing new that way. They've just made the decision to go to war with Iraq. He said, I guess it's like we don't know what to do about terrorists, but we've got a good military and we can take down governments. And uh, he said, I guess if, if the only tool you have is a hammer, every problem has to look like a nail. So I came back to see him a few weeks later. And by that time, we were bombing in Afghanistan. I said, are we still going to war with Iraq? And he said, oh, it's worse than that. He said, he reached over on his desk, he picked up a piece of paper, and he said, I just, he said, I just got this down from upstairs, meaning the Secretary of Defense office today, and he said, this is a memo that describes how we're going to take out seven countries in five years, starting with Iraq and then Syria, Lebanon, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, and finishing off Iran. the regime at this point? I mean, anything? An attack. An army attack or an no-fly zone. A hit on all our air bases. That the UN hit all our air, air bases. If that happens first, lots of the army, of lots of the army troops will defect with the heavy artillery and the tanks, which they can't now. How are they going to defect with the tanks if he owns the air? He would just bombard them. What good is a tank? If they've got airplanes. Nick, uh, it's such a desperate situation. Before we get into what Danny was saying about a possible uh, resolution for this crisis, uh, this.
ليش ما ليش ما يكون فيها تحقيق في في مقتل صدام حسين؟ قياده عربيه بالكامل تقتل تشنق في المشانقه عند تفرج لماذا؟ ما هو ممكن الدور جاي عليكم كلكم. اي نعم. ليش امريكا قاتلت مع صدام حسين ضد الخميني؟ كان صديقها تشيني كان صديق لصدام حسين. رامي السندي كان وزير دفاع الامريكي لما كان يدمروا في العراق صديق حميم لصدام حسين واخيرا باعوه وشنقوا حتى انتم اصدقاء امريكا نحن اصدقاء امريكا بلاش نقول انتم نحن اصدقاء امريكا كلنا قد توافق امريكا على شنقنا في يوم ما Well, it's getting serious in Syria. I mean, very serious. The Syrian crisis at a peak, diplomatic tensions flying high. The United States is disgusted that a couple members of this council continue to prevent us from fulfilling our sole purpose here. As American officials switch on the traditional approach of dealing with regimes they just don't like. Assad is crazy. He's a brutal dictator. He's killing his own people. This is the same narrative that we heard about Gaddafi. The media is right there to echo whatever spin is presented by those in power. Well, how disgusted are you? Disgusting, Richard. They identify with people in power. They echo what those people say. Secondly, they don't look too closely at the facts. An information war kickstarted as Russia and China refuse to stand behind America's position. Many are chanting, Russia is killing our children after a veto of the Russians, and then the Chinese stand in the way at the UN. But it was vetoed by Russia and China. Secretary of State Clinton reacted bitterly. The Russian and Chinese veto of a regime change resolution reacted to with confrontation by politicians. Clinton suggested Russia and China will eventually have to answer to the Syrian people for prolonging their pain. And news headlines attacking the two countries without detail or context. You represent a serious newspaper. Don't be ridiculous, please. No, my, an my, my answer to your serious question, don't be ridiculous. The media not showing the will to explain what led to the veto. It's a crack in the wall of lies, basically, or a rip in the tissue of lies that's being presented by the media here. If you look closely, or e even at all, at what Russia was saying, that there was violence taking place on both sides, you'd understand that what was happening was there was an armed insurgency backed by people from the outside. But this is an inconvenient truth. The media have long dubbed the armed groups a popular democratic uprising. The oppressors and the oppressed. Desperate new pleas come out of the country and growing calls for the world to stop the killing. With all the yelling and screaming, there is no time to think about who the opposition might really be and what a toppled regime could lead to. It's not enough to just say, Assad bad, rebels good. Who are these people? It's always possible to replace a, a mediocre or a terrible regime with something that's worse. Journalist Matt Lee has been covering the UN for years and knows all too well how the media likes to approach what happens. I cover the Security Council closely enough that I'll say like the sort of the, 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 the common sense, the knee-jerk answer to almost everything that happens there, Russia and China are wrong and the West is right. If you're going to cover the Security Council, you might as well actually like try to cover what actually happens rather than if you come into each day just knowing in advance, you know, who's good, who's bad, and what's going to happen, I think that you can miss a lot. Especially when the coverage narrative varies depending on where on the map the conflict stems from. The statement that you hear that any leader who kills his own people has lost all legitimacy, if that really were the standard, I think of you know, a not insubstantial percentage of the world's leaders would have lost their legitimacy. As the mainstream media sticks with journalism by press release, Americans who don't dig deeper themselves end up getting just one side of the story. With some facts amplified and others unexplained or simply left out, the media has gone from informing to misinforming the people. Anastasia Cherkina, RT, New York.